Hey everyone, this is just a free sample, the first chapter of my character airbrush course for Affinity Designer. If you want access to the full course, it's available on Gumroad and Udemy for $40. Or you can become a member of the YouTube channel and select the highest tier, the Lightning Kaiju tier. That's $9.99 a month, and you'll have access to the full course with its own dedicated playlist. Welcome to Affinity Designer. Now, a lot of you might be asking yourselves why I choose to use the software. I'm gonna go over three main reasons why I choose to use the software and why I think it's really powerful for the workflow I'm gonna teach you. If you don't have access to the software or you don't feel like purchasing it, any program with a pen tool and a set of airbrushes will do the trick. To get started, let's start by creating a new document by going to File, New, click this drop down menu right here, go to Web. I'm gonna click on the Wide Quad High Definition option or 1440p. On the left side, we have a toolbar with a set of tools in it, and each one creates a set of vector graphics. Vector just means it's mathematically based, so we can scale it up and scale it down as much as we need to. So for example, if I take this rectangle tool here, create a box, you'll notice when I zoom in, there are no pixels. It doesn't lose any quality. This is what vector means. And I can scale this up as big as I want, and we don't lose any quality here this edge will never change. However, when we export it, it will become raster. And the way that we can preview that is using this toolbar up here, we can click pixel preview mode. Now it's turned this vector shape into a pixel preview. Whenever a shape is made, a corresponding layer is made as well. If I continue to make shapes, additional layers will be added. We can change the color of objects using the color palette, which I keep in the top right, but if you don't have access to it or you don't see it anywhere, going to window color. I have mine set to wheel and triangle. If we press V on the keyboard, the move tool will be activated, and now we can select and transform things by clicking and dragging around. If we click and drag with our mouse, multiple objects will be selected, and you'll see here in the layers panel, the corresponding shapes have also been selected. We can also just select layers and the shape will be selected. If I hold shift and click, multiple layers will be selected, everything in between. If I hold control, I can select them individually or deselect them by holding control. I'm gonna make these a variety of colors real quick to show you some examples of different ways we can use the layer panel. Okay, so the way that layers work, anything on top is drawn first and the things below it in descending order are drawn next. If I click and drag a layer and I place it over the name of the object and let go, the green circle will now only appear inside of the orange circle. So if I click and drag this green circle around, you'll see that it appears only within the boundaries of the orange circle. If instead I click and drag a layer and place it on the thumbnail, a crop has been made. So this is a vector crop. So now the green shape is actually cropping the orange circle. Now the really cool thing about affinity programs is you can nest and clip mask things basically ad infinitum. You can do it over and over and over again. If I wanna clip inside a clip, all I need to do is drag a new object inside of the green one, the same way that I did it to the orange. And you'll see that there. So I have the orange ellipse holding the green ellipse, holding the blue ellipse. And I can move this blue ellipse independently and you'll see that it doesn't interact with the orange at all. And we can do the same thing with the red one. Let's put the red one inside the blue ellipse. And you'll see now I have a clipping mask inside a clipping mask inside a clipping mask inside a clipping mask. All right, let's undo all that. And instead, let's group them together. So I'm gonna click on the first layer, shift click, all of them, press control G, or I can right click, but I like hotkeys. So control G, it's going to group them together. And now this whole thing is a group and they move all together. They're not separate anymore, but I can still edit them individually if I need to. So now that I've made a group, when I select them, it's going to select all of the group first. If I want to open up this group, I can double click again and I can start selecting things individually. So again, if I click on it once, I get the whole group, double click to open the group and start selecting things individually. Press anywhere outside of the boundaries of one of the shapes or press control D to deselect objects. And of course you can duplicate layers using control C, control V or going up here and pressing duplicate. Another really useful feature of Affinity programs are layer styles, but they are called Quick Effects. So you go over to your Quick Effects panel here. Again, if you don't have it, Window Quick Effects. I keep them right next to my layers because I like to use it often. Go over to my Quick Effects and we have a series of different effects here. We've got our Emboss, Inner Glow, all that stuff. And I'm applying the Quick Effects to the entire group, not just the individual layers. But the Quick Effects I really like to use is the Gaussian Blur. Click on that. You'll see as I crank it up, 
it has non-destructively created a blur around each one of these objects. And if I move them around inside the group, you'll see that it's reflected as so. You'll see now in the layer panel, there is an effects icon next to anything with a quick effect on it. And if I click on the effects icon, it will open up the layer effects panel and I can now mess around with it. We're gonna be using the Gaussian blur often in this workflow. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. So if you need to ungroup anything, right click on it, ungroup. Layers also have a variety of blend modes. Normal is the default opaque layer blend mode. If we just scroll through the drop list, Affinity is generous enough to give us a preview of what the effect looks like. And I'm just gonna select some random ones here. You can see here how the layer order affects blend modes. Okay, that's the basics of layers, layer blend modes, and quick effects. I'm now gonna go over symbols. We're gonna go over to window, open our symbols. I keep mine down here at the bottom right, and I'm gonna hit create. Now what it's done is created essentially a representation of the green ellipse. But if we make any adjustments to it, it's going to reflect across all green ellipses that I drag in. So let's just name this green ellipse. And let's drag a couple on here. I'm gonna get rid of these other shapes here. And you can see here, I can scale them individually. But watch what happens if I start messing with them. So I'm gonna open up just one green ellipse and I'm gonna add a new square. Nothing's happened because it's the same color. But if I change the color, all green ellipses reflect that change. If I make any changes inside the symbol, it's gonna be reflected across all the symbols. Now let's say I like where my symbols are at, but I just wanna change one. But what I can do is I can go up to one of them and I can hit detach. Now it's detached the symbol from referencing the symbol pool and I can edit this one individually. No changes are reflected across the board. If we need to use objects that are similar or even look the same, symbols are a great way to save time by just copying and pasting something and then updating it later if we need to. Now we're gonna discuss personas. Personas are Affinity's sweet spot. This is something I really appreciate about these programs. They have dedicated workspaces and engines powering different parts of the program. So you'll see up here in the top left, we have our designer persona, pixel persona, and export persona. We won't be going over the export persona right now. We're gonna be jumping into the designer persona a lot and the pixel persona a lot and going back and forth between the two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a hotkey that makes this transition much easier than going up into my top left corner and clicking. So let's go to edit, preferences, shortcuts, and I have persona specific shortcuts here. So in the designer shortcut, I'm gonna make sure that my pixel persona hotkey is set to something that I think is pretty useful. So mine is F2. I'm gonna do the same thing in the pixel persona shortcuts. I'm gonna set the designer persona hotkey to F2. So now when I press F2, I go to my pixel persona and I go back to my designer persona back and forth. Now let's stick in our pixel persona for a second and you'll see I have a whole new set of tools here. These are all raster tools. So these are not gonna be vector based, they're going to be pixel based. And here we have access to a paintbrush, just like you would in a regular drawing program. If I click directly on a shape, if I have it selected, if I press B on my keyboard for brush and I start clicking and dragging around, Affinity Designer's assistant has created a new pixel layer masked to the ellipse layer. So I can just paint directly inside of this and it's locked to the ellipse shape. I'm gonna very quickly just demo out a sphere using this workflow. If I tab back into Designer Persona, I still have access to the ellipse and I can scale it, rotate it, and you see that the pixel layer beneath it scales and rotates with it. And if I combine this with the symbols that we talked about earlier, I just drag one on go back into pixel persona, F2, go back to my pixel layer. You'll see that changing one changes the other. So you can already get an example of how powerful this workflow is, but don't worry, if you're uncomfortable using the pen tool or basic shapes, I'm gonna go over those in the next chapter and I'll see you then. Thanks everyone, I hope you enjoyed this sample. And again, it is available for $40 on my Gumroad and Udemy, also available on this channel for $9.99 a month, the Lightning Kaiju tier. Have a great day.